Hey everyone, welcome back to the city stead. So we're getting close to the point where our weather is really just gonna start turning. Now, it does look absolutely gorgeous because it is. We still got a few more weeks of these, enough to where I think we're gonna get a good harvest out of some of this late stuff that we did. We may not have got our garden in early in the year how we'd wanted, but we did get a lot of stuff in throughout the summer. And we're starting to see the uh, fruits of all that labor. And it's been really nice to actually get a few things here and there, the tomatoes, uh, some greens, you know, a few little things here and there. Oh, we didn't get a huge harvest of anything. Uh, we just had a really bad year. Uh, my schedule didn't work very well. Uh, being out of town, some of the key points of planting and just working a lot in the travel earlier in the year, trying to enjoy family time. So everything was behind. We were constantly trying to catch up and we actually got to a point where we were just kind of like, you know, let's go do this instead because that was going to be a more reward for the time put into it than trying to get caught up in the garden. We just had to make choices. So with all that being said, I did start this thing in the high intensity micro garden. Let me show you the actual bed <laughs> right here. It's not really as lush as I would like or as I would hoped it would be, but it's still fairly lush. It's still got a lot of production for such a small area. I thought today what I would do is give you a little bit of a explanation of my thought process on why I planted some of the things the way I did and what I was hoping to achieve by doing this little micro bed and what I look forward to using in the future as I move on with the same, I, same concept but maybe larger scale and maybe across more beds than just this one. So let's get into why I planted this the way I did and what I was trying to achieve with it. If you guys are not familiar with the high intensity little micro bed that we have going, I'll put the link to the playlist right there for you to check it all out. And it's from beginning to end, from when I built this bed to what I planted and my, why I was planting those things to different updates throughout the uh, you know, life of this bed. So here we are 10 weeks into it and I'm gonna kind of explain to you what I was thinking when I was doing this and kind of designed it in my head. It may have seemed random at first, but there was a lot of thought I was putting into what I was putting in here and how I was gonna do it. So, I have some friends down in Florida that are the food foresters. I love their channel and what they're doing with the food forest. And I also got a lot of this idea from like James Prigioni at the Gardening Channel. The whole idea of food forest just really fascinates me. Ever since I started looking into permaculture, I really loved it. And I was trying to bring some of the concept of the food forest into the garden. Now, you might be thinking, what do you mean? What were you, how, how were you planning on doing that? So, if you know anything about food forest, the basic structure is there's different layers. And you have like your high overstory, your mid story, you got somewhere in between, you got like a, a ground cover. That's what I was hoping to achieve with most of this bed by putting the trellis up over top of it and planting squash and beans on it, I was hoping to create an upper canopy. Now, this is some of the things I chose. I chose tomatoes. And if you see my tomatoes, early on I had cut a lot of the branches off the very bottom of them. So they're very, very leggy. I was hoping to make them kind of like a mid-story brush type thing. So by trimming off the bottom leaves of it, giving room for my understory or my ground cover, which was gonna be all my lettuces. So I got arugula in here, I had some freckled lettuce, some Swiss chard I tried, and then we ended up actually putting in some uh, watermelon radishes in this one open area. We were supposed to have eggplant here. And an eggplant was supposed to be slightly shorter than the tomatoes, to kind of take up that space between the lettuce and the tomatoes. And then I planted okra, and I was hoping the okra would actually grow taller than tomatoes. Now, we are in Michigan, so okra takes a little bit longer to grow and grow tall. And I planted it sort of late in the year, so I didn't do what I wanted it to do. It didn't grow as tall. So, but I think the concept is there, and the idea of this really kind of worked well. Now, having such diverse plants in a very tiny area like this would really help a lot with 
pest because you're going to get different pests that affect one plant and not another but the plants that have attracted to the other plant those pests they might actually be predators for the pests that are on a different plant so you get a lot of action going on in here kind of like the idea of a food forest if you bring in this you know you got to have this plant because it might bring in this pest to help eradicate that one and it might be a good one here so i think we are trying to achieve a lot of that and from what i can see nothing really was damaged except for everything the groundhog damaged <laughs> and that's a whole different story if you haven't seen my groundhog video you should check that out it's my story a uh, ridiculous story that i have about a groundhog from a couple years ago uh, this year's groundhog was just as bad he's been everywhere and i can't catch the sucker but anyways and then we also planted a bunch of like herbs in here to also help with pests now i've always planted marigolds and basil next to my tomato plants and I have never, ever had a single tomato hornworm. I've been gardening for seven years with no hornworms. And that's a major problem for a lot of people. I really think the basil and the marigold is a good combination that really helps me in that area. Now you also remember we planted some cucumbers in here. And the cucumbers kind of got eaten a little bit too by the groundhog. It just ate everything this year. But they were going to climb up this trellis that I put in on the back side here. And all of that eventually was gonna, supposed to create like a shade wall from the majority of where that sun comes from all day long. And then that was gonna help the lettuce from Bolton. And I think all of this was working out fairly well. Oh man, that's probably a storm. <laughs> so I think all of this was working out very, fairly well. I think we just got to it later, too late in the year to really uh, reap the rewards of what we were doing. So. What you're gonna see next year is I'm gonna continue on with this process. I might make a larger bed to try it in. This is only four foot by four foot. And I can grow a lot of stuff in just this space. I mean, if everything would have been produced in how I thought, we could have had eggplants, cucumbers, okra, tomatoes, lettuce, arugula, uh, beans, squash. Uh, we were doing what we were doing, the zuki, uh, spaghetti squash and an acorn squash and the cucumbers we could have had all that basil i got basil in here we could have had all of that in this one small area uh it looks like i got a couple beans in here i got a couple tomatoes i got a couple spaghetti squash i have arugula swiss chard and, and lettuce so we still got quite a bit in here and that's you know being late in the season having the groundhog do a lot of damage that he did and we still managed to get quite a bit of this stuff. So I'm really, really excited about this ideal of a food forest garden style. And I think I'm gonna keep going on with it and you will see a bunch of it next year. I'm gonna do multiple different style beds and I'm gonna see what works better and what doesn't work. All right, so let's kind of go over what I thought some of the layers would be and how they would work. So on my ground, I had a lot of lettuce, arugula, Swiss chard, basil, and that was all going to be like my ground cover, like the forest floor, basically. Now for my mid uh, level, I was going to have eggplants and peppers. Now they were going to kind of just be in that mid range, just above our greens that we would have and provide that mid, mid greenish area, kind of like a brush. Then I had these tomatoes and my thing that I was trying to do with the tomatoes was make them leggy so that everything could grow up underneath the tomatoes and the tomatoes would be the mid-level right in the right here in the mid area that you're seeing now i was going to have my okra had it got big enough be a little bit taller than our tomatoes and it would be kind of that almost upper story uh, level not quite you know but it was going to be right about there now the canopy being that i don't have a ton of things that grow super tall like that that would provide enough shade was gonna be things like squash, beans, uh, Malabar spinach, and cucumbers. By trellising all of those and letting them bush out and grow and vine on top of these cattle panels, they were gonna provide our upper story, our over story of this whole concept of a food forest garden. And so I think all of that worked for the most part of how it was. Uh, next year, we're gonna start this first thing in the spring early enough to where we can really see how well it all does but my initial experiment with you know a few what were we eight ten weeks 
little over two months of growth in this. It really worked out pretty well. So I can't imagine what we're gonna look like in an entire summer having our food uh, forest garden here. So if you're interested in this method and you wanna see more about it, stay tuned for next summer as I continue to experiment with food forest gardening and just keep going forward with it because I really enjoy this and I think it's probably a good thing for urban uh, gardeners, urban homesteaders. This is the kind of things we need to learn is how to grow a good variety of stuff in a very small space and really use that to push forward in our own uh, want for self-reliance and self-sufficiency. Well, that's an update from the micro garden or the bitty bed just for you we will see you guys in the next one okay so as you guys know I had put this little micro bed up and if you haven't seen any of the videos on the updates and all that we're 10 weeks into it right now and I will put a playlist right there 